Welcome back to According to John, where the answers come first and the explanations come later. Today, I repasted my Lenovo P52 mobile workstation. I used, I don't have it with me, but a Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot. I used that and did some uh, before and after results, and we'll get to those right now. With the stock thermal paste, uh, my temperatures were 97 degrees flat across the board. And with the Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot repaste, I was able to get a lot better thermal performance. Uh, stock voltage, 90 degrees from 97. With the CPU and GPU running full blast, though, the cooling solution inside the laptop just can't keep up. So still 97 degrees there, but there's a caveat. There's a little, little secret that'll come up in just a second here. Undervolted, the CPU ran at 92 degrees Celsius instead of 97. And undervolted the CPU and GPU at full blast, still 97. But again, there was this benefit right here. You can see that the repaste is allowing the processor to pull its full specified 45 watt TDP. So that is improving our clock speeds a little bit. So with the crown not paste, 2.81 gigahertz at a 45 watt draw compared to 2.58. Even uh, at stock voltage with the CPU and GPU at full blast, uh, it's running about 300 megahertz faster per core. And it's, it's pulling close to 45 watts. Uh, under volted, the CPU is running about 600 megahertz faster per core and much cooler. And under volted, the CPU with GPU is about 550 megahertz faster, but it's still the same temperature. But the improvements are are visible and are, are are very welcomed, very, very welcomed. You can also see pass mark scores I did before the repaste and after the repaste. And you can see a big improvement. I'm happy. You should be happy. Let's all be happy. So those are my, my results. Uh, so repasting definitely does improve the thermal performance of this P52 a lot. And the performance is, is visible. It really is. That's great. If you'd like to stick around, I videotaped the entire disassembly and I'll put that right now if you want to watch that. Otherwise, if you just want to get to the part where I get to the CPU cooler, just go to this time code. You can skip all the boring stuff. Let's do it. What I'm doing today is I'm taking my Lenovo P52 and I've decided to repaste it because the thermal performance from stock uh, just isn't it wasn't that great. So what I have here is the P52 maintenance manual, which will guide me through taking this thing apart. We're going to repaste CPU and GPU and hopefully get some better uh, thermal results. I've already done some thermal testing on this computer. You can see the results here. I also did just a quick little retest for this video in general. And that's it. Let's just get into it. Uh, uh, above shot should be good. Awesome. First thing, take the battery out. All right. We got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Take off. And just for a little reference, I, I will be repasting with Cryonaut from Thermal Grizzly. I wanted to do liquid metal, but uh, since the liquid metal is made out of gallium, and gallium, even though it's not very, uh, uh, what's the word, not very reactive with copper, it still will plate the copper uh, over a long period of time. And I didn't want that to happen in this laptop because I plan on having this laptop for a while. So I decided to just go with regular thermal paste, but the best that you can pretty much buy. Okay. Next, take out the hard drives and memory modules. Okay. No memory modules, because I just have the two underneath the keyboard, but I do have ooh, an M.2 drive here, which I think I'm gonna leave in there because there is a thermal pad right here that is that it's uh, stuck to and it should be fine just being there. 
So after that's done, it wants a keyboard removed. Now this is supposed to require a special like keyboard tool, which I do not have, but it looks like the keyboard tool just pops these two keys up and you should be able to get to two access screws here. So I have my little spudger here and we should be able to just get under here, I hope. Okay, it's got some like business cards here. So we should be able to just get under here. And I'm pretty sure it's, you, you just have to pop this key off without breaking it. That's scary, but I think nothing broke. It's good. See, and then here, you can see there's a little tiny screw. Sorry, I can't really zoom in. I can try to digitally zoom. A little screw there I think you have to take off. Hmm. Bada bing. Okay, keep those two. Loosen the screws that secure the keyboard. Looks like these little guys. Two little, two, two little screws right there. And then it shows pushing. Looks like on two little tiny tabs here. Okay, so I found a video on YouTube, it looks like you're just supposed to pry up oh, yeah. pry up and like forward, oh yeah, okay, oh, oh yes. Perfect. So you basically have to use these little, it's really hard to see. Maybe I'll try to take a picture of it, but you just have to push the keyboard forward so you can get this side unlatched and then you can pull it back. And there it is. So we have some connectors we need to disconnect. Looks like track point and the main keyboard which are these two guys right here. So we're just going to flip up the little retention mechanisms and pull those two cables out. Bada bing, bada boom. Keyboard has been successfully removed without any damage. Okay, so this looks like where the other two memory modules are. There's a little shielding plate here. I think I'm going to remove that and remove the memory modules just to be safe. If anyone's interested, these are Micron 16 gigabyte 2R times 8 PC DDR4 2666, but it only runs at, I believe, 2400 megahertz. I'll, I'll double check that. So it looks like it's a faster rated memory than what the system actually uses, but. Okay, keyboard bezel assembly. That's what we want next. Looks like we have to turn it back over. Next, we have to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, which are located right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these don't seem to be captured, so we're gonna have to keep these pretty well organized. Uh, Next to each screw is a little bit of a denotation of what type of screw it is, which is kind of nice, I guess, if you lose them. So these should be pretty easy to keep track of. 
I need like a little tweezers. I used to have one. Maybe I'm just gonna put them on a piece of paper with where they go. Just so I don't lose them. Okay. Oh, what's next? It says turn it over. Okay. All right. So we have, looks like fingerprint sensor and trackpad cables that we need to remove next. Both are right here. We're gonna flip up the little retention arms on each one using my pinky nail. And then we will pull them out gently. Ta-da! Okay. Looks like there's also a few fan headers right here. Completely. So after you have that, it looks like you should be able to just lift up all of this. Very gently as not to You hope that they use a durable enough plastic that the little tabs won't break. And looks like this uh, trackpad cable is glued down right here. I may try to leave that there if I can. All right. Because it looks like there's a connector on the underside, which I can undo, but can I redo it after? Just like that. Whew. All right. Looks like we might have to take the screen off because there's still this hard, this magnesium chassis that is on top of the motherboard here that we need to get at. So, removal of the hinge cap, so right here and right here. We just need to take these little screws out right here. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice metal. Of course, of course. This one's not as friendly. being a little bit extra careful just because this is a very new laptop and I'd like to keep it that way. A new working laptop. Okay. Then it has us turn it back around. There are some additional screws that need to come off. Looks like we have one here, one here. And then there are two underneath these little covers, which I'm gonna to have to pry off. So let's take these off first. Let's see if I can do this without damaging anything. Hopefully I can reuse them. It's 
As long as they don't get any finger oil on the adhesive, it should be okay. So there's the two additional screws. All in the name of science. And there we go. Put this down. I suppose you could always just put a little bit of super glue on there. Okay. Now, take these screws out. All right. There are two screws right here next that you have to do. Okay. And then that releases the LCD panel. But first, we need to disconnect all these. It's like we've got some Wi-Fi antenna wires as well as uh, uh, backlight power and data and probably a cable for the webcam. So let's figure out what we have here. Wi-Fi card looks to be right here. Disconnect those. Unroute. WAN antenna cables. This looks like it'll just pull right up. A little wiggle, there we go. This should just lift right off. There we go, look at that. There's our 4K panel. Beautiful. You can kind of start to start to see the heat sink underneath there. That is what we're after. Okay, next is this top magnesium case. And it looks like there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six screws. I'm kind of getting excited because I really want this to have decent thermals. Okay. I need to change my seat here. My legs are falling asleep. After those five screws are disconnected, wants me to disconnect this cable and this cable. I don't know what this cable is for. I don't remember unplugging that. That might be for the smart card reader right there. But this looks like it's a speaker assembly right there. So we will just gently Fry up on this little tiny connector. There we go. We'll feel like there's one more screw, like right over here. I feel like it might be these two on the back. I don't remember reading anything about those. Let me go back and just double check. Ah, uh, yes. This one, this one, and this one need to come off as well. That was on page 98. So I missed that. The feeling when a screw is just not coming out very well. Mm -hmm. Now this should be... Oh yeah, look at that, just fell right off. All right, this is what we've all been waiting for. Here is the cooling assembly for the P52 mobile workstation. You can see there's a larger heat pipe going from, I would assume this is the GPU right here, and then this is the CPU over here. So looks like there is a dedicated heat, heat pipe for the CPU going to this cooler. Then there's a heat pipe on top of that one coming off of the GPU. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get that off there and 
It's like there is a specific order that you're supposed to do these in. Loosen them up. So you're supposed to do this one. Oh yeah, it even says on here one. Those are tight. One, two, three. So it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I am loosening them in that sequence, and I also will be tightening tightening them in that sequence. Five, six, seven. All right, here we go. Hopefully they're all nice and loose. There we are. Got some thermal pads for the memory, which I will just reuse. But there's a thermal paste application. We've got the CPU, GPU, and uh, it looks just like crappy little goop. To be honest, it looks looks a little dry, but it's made for longevity and not op optimum thermal performance. The first repaste of the Lenovo P52 mobile workstation. Cool. Well, let's have a little look here this uh, mesh that's right here. I wish there's a way to remove that because that seems like it's really blocking airflow from these fans. These are Sunan Sunan Maglev fans, five volts, 2.25 watts. Take a picture of that. Anybody was interested in that. And there is a heat pipe, or heat sink, heat sink, heat sink, heat sink, of which looks like the uh, heat pipes do run through. All right, well, let's uh, get this all cleaned up and repasted. The singing alcohol bottle. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Now to repaste. Now I know there are lots of ideals out there as to the best method for repasting. Dot method, goob method, spread method. I have grown up using the spread method. So I'll put a little bit of dot, a little dot on there and then I will just spread it out manually. So everything is covered. It's just what I've done since I was a wee, wee little, little tot and it's worked just fine for me. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I also do a small layer on the heat sink. So both the heat sink and there. Um, maybe it's too much. I don't know. But I've never had any thermal issues with any of the computers I've built. by doing it this way, so. Oh. Oh. Just a thin layer there, thin layer there, thin layer there, thin layer there. Hopefully that's enough. We'll find out if the thermals are even worse. <laughs> I'll have to take this all apart again and fix it. All right, now it's just reverse. Put it back together the way that you took it apart. Should be easy, right? One, two,
Could they make the Wi-Fi antenna connectors any smaller? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, now we need to put all these screws back in. That's done, that's done. Stick those back down. All right, what do I got left? Stick the memory back in. Okay. And then we push in this way first. Oh, we got something sticking up over here. Aha. Okay. And that way first, pull it back down. Just like that. Okay, everything is back together. I'm gonna keep those buttons off just in case. I don't have to take them off again because I figure uh, little plastic pieces um, are better left um, it's not good to re-stress little plastic pieces over and over, so just in case. Everything else looks nice and tight. Let's reinstall my SSD here. All right, batteries going in. Don't smell anything burning, it's good. Cord. Here, we'll do it without power cord just so you guys can see it. Moment of truth. Power on. Okay, power light. It's good. Keyboard and display. All right. I think, I think we're good. It works. Woo. Now, uh, time to run some stress tests. Let's see if the performance is any better. I will let the stress test run probably for like a good 20 minutes just to kind of set the thermal paste, make sure there aren't any issues there. And uh, cool, I'm excited. Well, hey, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give a good, good thumbs up if you like thermal repastes and uh, we'll see you next time.